you. Welcome to the uh, PhD defense of one of our colleagues, Marta Delis. Marta, I didn't actually for so many years I didn't know her. <laughs> Marta, yeah. but it's not without an R. Okay. And uh, Marta is one of the members in our innovation, design, and entrepreneurship group. Mm -hmm. And uh, after years of a PhD study, now it's time for her to present you and defend her PhD thesis, which is titled. Development of computational tools to support design synthesis for product perception. And her thesis project was supervised by Professor Saima Ahmed Christensen from um, Imperial College and DTU. And the co-supervisor is uh, Christina Shia from ETH and from Switzerland. And then, um, it's all my honor to uh, introduce the assessment committee. The committee chairman is Professor Henning Boy Anderson from EQ Management Engineering. And uh, the other two committee members is our two, uh, Professor Jean Francois Piquio, correctly, from uh, Ecole Centrale de Nantes in France. And also Dr. Hauking Shao from the University of Leeds. And welcome to TTU, welcome to Denmark. And our very briefly introduce the rules and the procedure is as following. When the presentation starts, Mata has 45 minutes, up to 45 minutes to make the presentation. After the presentation, depending on the time, sometimes you might run a little bit longer than you expected, that's also fine, I will keep it under control. Then we'll, after the presentation, we'll give a break, about 10 to 15 minutes. During the break, everybody drink water, relax, and talk a little bit. Marta can also relax a little bit. And uh, after the break, we'll come back. Then the assessment committee will raise the questions. Then Marta will defense, uh, defend her thesis. And be because it is a public defense, by law, everybody has your right to raise questions to the defendant as well. So if you do have any questions after her presentation, please come to me first to raise inform me to say, Jason, we, I have a question that I would like to address to her. So we will schedule the time for any questions that might come from the audience after the examiners exhausted their questions. Okay? And the entire procedure from now on to the end should not exceed three hours. That's the basic rules. So, um, now the floor is yours. Martha, go ahead. Thank you, Jason, for the introduction. And welcome everyone to this uh, lecture in defense of my PhD dissertation. The title, as already mentioned, is Development of Computational Tools to Support Design Synthesis for Product Perception. Um, this is an overview of the story that I'm sharing with you today. I will briefly introduce the topic and why it is interesting. I will provide a summary of the key theoretical concepts and how they provide a framework for the research. Then I will explain how the research has been conducted. I will describe the studies with a focus in the results. And then I will present the conclusions, the contributions to academia and industry, and the future research directions. So understanding consumer needs and preferences is key in today's consumer society. The wide range of solutions already existing in the market make it increasingly difficult for the person, for the consumer, to choose one product out of the many that are there in the market because they share very similar functionalities. Consumer psychology tells us that uh, the consumer will always choose the product they find most attractive between two of equal price and function. So product differentiation is quite important nowadays for companies. We found in the literature that what designers and consumers perceive from the shapes of the product or from the aesthetics sometimes differs, which means that the designer is not always able to communicate the correct information to the consumer through the aesthetics of the product. So we found the need to understand the factors that influence this perception, both from the product side and from the consumer side. We also identified a need for support in generating the aesthetics of products to target perceptions. So now to the literature. There are five main areas of interest in this research. These are consumer research, emotional design and perceptions, aesthetics, background and culture, and computational design synthesis. As already mentioned in the introduction, uh, 
the consumer will always choose the product they find most attractive between two of equal price and function. So the form of the product is very important. It makes the product stand out from competitors and it attracts consumers to the shape. It also communicates information to the consumer, for example, regarding quality. And it also provides sensory and aesthetic pleasure through appearance and use. Customer satisfaction is an indicator of how well the needs of a target consumer group are being met and it additionally influences purchase decisions. This kind of model of customer satisfaction was created to map the different requirements of the factors that influence this um, satisfaction. So we have two axes here. We have from requirement not being fulfilled to requirement fulfilled and from customer dissatisfied to customer satisfied. There are three main types of requirements. The first ones are the must-be requirements, which are expected to be in the product and people take for granted. So if they are not in the product, the person will feel very dissatisfied, but if they are, they will remain neutral. An example of this would include the accuracy of a clock. So these are the must-have requirements. Then we have the one-dimensional requirements that influence satisfaction proportionally to how well they are met. And these are easy to obtain from consumers just by asking them. An example of this will include the high resolution of a new camera. So these are good to have requirements. Finally, we have the attractive requirements, which have the highest influence on satisfaction. They are not expected, so if they're not in the product, the person will not notice. But if they are, they will really improve satisfaction. And these are the nice to have requirements. Time additionally influences the attractive requirements and as time passes they become one dimensional and even must be requirements which, mean, which means that it's important to bring in continuous innovations to keep these uh, attractive requirements high. All these uh, requirements are critical, the three of them to the success of the product in the market. However, it's not always possible to, to uh, fulfill all of them so one strategy that uh, it's used is to focus more on the attractive requirements to cover for some missing one-dimensional requirements or even must-be requirements. Emotional design focuses on the creation of products that offer pleasant experiences and in particular they look into understanding how the aesthetics, uh, how the design of the product affects the emotions from the consumer and try to develop methods and tools to support the generation of new design solutions. There are three main approaches to understanding emotional design. These are uh, the pleasantness approach, the process level approach and the appraisal approach. And even though the authors use different terminology, they all agree that there are three main uh, levels of information processing from the product, the aesthetic aspects, the functional aspects and the emotional ones. The first interaction with the product is normally through the senses, so this belongs to the aesthetic aspects. And it's here where the first impression of the product is created and is normally shared around the world. Then the person evaluates the use and the functionality of the product, and this can be influenced by experience. And finally, the person reflects on the object in relation to his or her own situation, and it's here where emotions appear. And, um, uh, the emotion that the person feels is in the individual. It's uh, because the situation of every person is different. In this research, we have focused on the aesthetic aspects only, and we're specifically interested in understanding how the shape of a product influences perceptions. Perceptions are what is noticed or experienced through the senses. And there is no finite list of perceptions, but there is a finite list of categories. And Goldman proposed these eight, broadly evaluative, formal, emotional, evocative, behavioral, representational, and historical. Oh, perceptual is also there. So from all these categories, only the last one, the historical one, is influenced by the time factor, which means that the previous experience of the person influences uh, the evaluation, the perception from the product. So for example, you think a product or an object is original in comparison to all the other products from the same category you have met before or you know about.
Aesthetics within design research are the properties of a product that create its appearance and are able to generate instant responses when the product is experienced through the senses. The aesthetic response is rapid and involuntary and is not only limited to the visual domain, it also applies to the other senses of taste, hear, touch and smell. Material, color, ornamentation, shape, size and reflectivity are aesthetic features of the product that in the right combination can provide pleasure. There are two ways of understanding aesthetics, the evolutionary aesthetics approach and the cultural aesthetic approach. The first one, the evolutionary aesthetics, understands aesthetic responses as the result of evolution. So we humans develop a preference for those things that are good for us, like food and a safe environment, and develop a system to quickly discern what is good from what is bad. So implicit in this idea is that um, the evaluations, the aesthetic evaluations will be shared around different cultures and therefore be universal. On the other hand, we have the cultural aesthetic approach that says the aesthetic preferences of the individual are influenced by the social environment where they are brought up, in, brought up in, which means that there will be cultural differences in perception. Investigating the literature to find differences or similarities in the influence that background has on perception, we found some cultural differences, for example, in the meaning associated to color, which found differences for different age, gender and country groups. And we also found some perception terms to be perceived different for people belonging to different countries. The cultural similarities include the Gestalt rules of perception that are known to be universal and transcend cultures are about how humans interpret the world and that's shared. We also found cultural similarities for the meaning associated to color for different age and country groups. And finally, we also found perception terms that were stable across different age, uh, gender and country groups. So there we found similarities and differences, both of them. Computational design synthesis. Uh, so design synthesis deals with the creation of new design concepts to solve problems. And in research, design synthesis concentrates on the development of guidelines, methods and tools to support the generation of new solutions. There are three main uh, types of computational design systems. The first one is the spatial grammars that apply rules iteratively to generate new solutions from an initial shape. The evolutionary algorithms that take concepts from the biological evolution and evolve a population of solutions, a population of random designs to generate new solutions. And finally, we have the generative design method that is a CAD-based generative exploration. What is important about this is that some researchers recently have started to incorporate perception information into the generative design systems. And we have some example here, examples here, like uh, the bottles. These are um, developed through a grammar to generate professional-looking shampoo bottles. And in the bottom, we have examples of sporty cars, silhouettes generated through a genetic algorithm. So, conclusions from the literature. We have, from consumer research, we have highlighted the importance that aesthetics have on perception. They attract consumers and make the product stand out from competitors. From emotional design and perceptions, we found three levels of uh, product understanding, including the aesthetic, the functional, and the emotional one. And the focus of the research was on perceptions. From aesthetics, we found material, color, ornamentation, shape, size and reflectivity in the right combination can provide pleasure. From background and culture, we found contradictory results on the influence that the background of the participants can have on perception. And from computational design synthesis, we found an underdeveloped process to incorporate information on perception into the generative design systems although there is a very high potential. And most of the work is done in two dimensions and little is done in 3D form. So to the research, maybe I should just close this. So this research has uh, two main research questions. The first one is uh, what are the background and aesthetic related factors 
that influence perception and how can they be used to inform design decisions. And from this research question, two research objectives were derived. So the first research ob ob objective, research objective 1.1, is to identify the background factors that influence perception individually or in combination with other variables. And research objective 1.2 is to identify the existing aesthetic design principles and how they can be used for design synthesis. Research question number two is uh, how to support design synthesis activities targeting perception while accounting for shape. And again, two research objectives were derived. Research objective 2.1 is to implement the aesthetic design rules into design synthesis methods. And research objective 2.2 is to evaluate how well the proposed tools are able to support design synthesis for targeting perception. This is uh, the framework for the research. It has two main aspects. The top part is about understanding perception, that's the first part, and including the background and the aesthetic factors. And then the second part is about the computational generative design, where we take the information from the first step and we include it and we implement it into generative systems and we evaluate how well they are performing. So the studies now, I will just Study 1A is uh, placed here in this framework. It's addressing research objective 1.1, which to remember is to identify the background factors that have an influence on perception individually or in combination with other variables. Study 1 collected data through an online survey and obtained 71 participant responses. We evaluated 11 VAS, VAS designs that are here on the right and we selected vases because of their high aesthetic appeal and their simple functionality. We collected data on five background variables, age, gender, country, style and design background. And we asked the participants to rate the 11 vas concepts from before against 10 pairs of opposite perceptions, like for example the one that you have here, so number one from ugly to beautiful or aggressive to passive or cheap to expensive, etc. And this uh, perception information was collected through semantic differential scales with seven levels, like the example here, so from very ugly to very beautiful with a neutral in the middle. And after this evaluation through the 10 pairs of perceptions, we asked the participants to rate if they would like to own this product or not. We investigated the influence that the background has on perception for two variables, the desire to own, and for beautiful. The desire to own was uh, investigated because the goal of companies is to solve a problem or address a need and they do this through selling products. And beautiful was selected because it was found to be highly correlated to the desire to own. What we found from the analysis is that no background variables had an influence or correlated to the desire to own, but perceptions and aesthetic features were correlated. And for beautiful, we found that gender here did have a significant correlation with uh, beautiful. We found that women rate the vases as more beautiful than men do. And although significant this difference is, we have not considered because it's very small. And it does not make women and men uh, rate the vases in a different uh, point in the semantic differential scale. So we have not considered this. Again, beautiful was uh, correlated with aesthetic factors. And here I will explain to you what this means. So desire to own was found to be positively correlated to vases that are perceived to be beautiful, expensive and elegant. It's negatively correlated to vases that are perceived as mature, aesthetic and boring. And it's also negatively correlated to vases that have a high gravity point, a cold color and a brilliant color. For beautiful, we found that vases that have, so is negatively correlated to vases that are perceived or have a complex shape, have low chroma and curved corners. Study 1B is uh, located here in this framework and is addressing research objective 1.2, which is to identify the existing aesthetic design principles and how they can be used for design synthesis. 
We uh, looked into the literature and reviewed different areas, including psychology, emotional design, perceptions, and product and graphic design. And we were looking specifically to identify principles that relate aesthetic factors with perceptions. From this review, we found 36 design principles and we categorized them in three groups according to the level of details of the instructions they provided for the generation of new solutions. So the first category is the general principles or loss of perception on how humans understand the world and group elements together. The second category is the design principles that affect aesthetic preference and aesthetic evaluation. And the last category is the design principles for perception that relate aesthetic and perceptions. The first two groups of principles are more general and can apply across product categories, while the last group is uh, product specific, so the instructions that we find there are specifically for the products that we investigated. I have some examples here of uh, the principles, one for each of the categories. So the first principle, principle one proximity, says that the elements with the smallest interval or spacing between them will be grouped together. So the factors that influence the proximity is the physical distance between the elements. You have an example here on the right with the dots. According to this principle, you will perceive it as four rows of dots because the x, the distance in the x direction between the dots is smaller than in the y direction. Principle 14, scale and proportion, is about the relative size and the spatial balance that can be linear, aerial or volumetric. The factors that influence scale and proportion for the shape include the ratio of major linear dimensions of object features, the ratios of areas and the ratios of volumes. And the factors that influence the scale and proportion for compositions include the relative spacing of objects, the relative size, area and volume of objects. So now I just want to specify that the factors tell us, okay, these elements have an influence or are related, but they don't tell us how we can use them for design purposes. So this is what the last column, the design column is telling us, the design rule. So we have the golden ratio and the root rectangles are known to be proportions that people like. So if you use them in your designs, they will pr like or prefer that uh, proportion to others. You have an example here with this um, golden rectangle, which you normally find in business cards and credit cards. And finally, the last principle, number 36, is artificial and organic perceptions investigated for vases. And the factors that influence aesthetic uh, artificial and organic is the line curve ratio. Again, line curve ratio influences both of them, but it does not tell you specifically how to use it in the design of a new vase. So the design rule is more specific and tells you, okay, if you would like to design a vase that is perceived as artificial, you should use more straight lines than curves in the design, like the example that you have there on the right. Study two is uh, here in this framework, and it's addressed in Research Objective 2.1, which is to implement the aesthetic design rules identified into existing design synthesis methods. This study too implemented the aesthetic design rules that we found in the previous study into a set grammar and a parametric model. The set grammar was selected because it was found in previous research to be able to include perception information into the degenerative design. And parametric models were selected because of their uh, wide range of operations available and compatibility with computational tools. Then we used VASES as the case study again because of their high aesthetic appeal and simple functionality and because we already had the aesthetic design rules to generate vases. We developed these tools to generate beautiful, elegant and exciting vases. And here on the right you can see the image rela relating. On the left column you have the aesthetic ratios or aesthetic uh, rules, design rules, and on the right the exciting, elegant and beautiful perception that we are addressing. So tall, for example, is correlated to all three perceptions. Simple is also correlated to all three perceptions and beautiful is correlated also with curves. So we are also using these aesthetic rules. The set grammar implementation includes three primitive shapes. 
like the ones that you see here. You have boxes, cylinders, and cones. And it implemented the tall and simple rule. The tall rule was implemented by uh, adding different primitives one on top of the other and always making sure that the resulting vast was taller than wider. And the simplicity or the simple rule was implemented by limiting the number of primitives that could be uh, stacked, let's say, or added to the design to a maximum of three. And the reason for this is because previous vast examples were made out of maximum three of primitives or volumes. This uh, grammar was, uh, includes uh, grammar rules, a total of 11 grammar rules that can be divided in four groups. The first group of rules will add the first primitive to the design. The second group of rules will add the second primitive on top of the first one. The third type of rules will include the last th third primitive on top of the other two. And the last group of uh, rules will stop the generation. So with this implementation, we can obtain vases with one, two, and three primitives. For the parametric model implementation, we have used two generic models, a revolution, including four points connected with a polyline, and a loft operation, including three profiles and connected with a loft operation. These operations were used because they were found, again, in previous examples of buses that were perceived as beautiful, elegant, and exciting. We implemented the tall and simple curves. In this example, tall was implemented, again, limiting the height of the vast to be always taller than wider. Simple rule was implemented by limiting the number of operations that could apply to the generation of this vast to only one, either a revolution or a loft. And the curves were implemented by changing the, in the case of the revolution, the polyline was changed to a spline, while in the loft operation, the loft was changed from being a straight loft to a soft transition for the loft. Here are the solutions that we obtained through the three uh, methods. We have 30 set grammar solutions at the bottom section. Then we have 30 loft solutions in the middle section and 30 revolution solutions in the top section. So we can say it is possible to implement design rules for perception into generative systems. And even though we have used very few primitive shapes and operations, we have been able to generate many different vast solutions. Study three is uh, placed here in this map, in this framework, and is addressing research objective 2.2, which is to evaluate how well the proposed tools support the design synthesis targeting perceptions. Study three collected data again through an online survey and obtained 66 participant responses. We asked the participants to rate 12 vast designs, the ones that you can see here on the right. And these vast designs were randomly selected from the pool of 90 solutions that we saw before. Six of these solutions were generated through the set grammar and six through the parametric models. And out of these, four uh, vasts again were randomly selected and manually modified to follow the opposite of the aesthetic rules. So they were generated to be short and more complex and include more straight lines than curves. And they would act as control vases. We also collected data on four background variables, age, gender, country, and design background, and asked the participants to evaluate the three pairs of perceptions, so how ugly or beautiful, from boring to exciting, and from clumsy to elegant. Again, using semantic differential scales with seven levels, like the example there. From previous research, we found that it is possible to predict perception by averaging the aesthetic features of the product. So we use this concept and apply it to our research. Here on the right, again, you see the summary of the aesthetic rules that influence or are correlated to each of the perceptions. And we generated an equation by averaging those uh, aesthetic rules. So for the exciting perception, we have that uh, simple and tall have an influence to this perception and we have averaged those values. It is the same equation for elegant it is as it is influenced by the same aesthetic features. And for beautiful, we also added curves to the equation. We expected that the vases that were generated to be beautiful, elegant and exciting would be more beautiful, elegant and exciting than the control vases. 
and we have confirmed this for VAS 5, 6 and 11 for the exciting and elegant perception and also confirmed for VAS 6 and 11 for the beautiful perception. However, we found that VAS 12 was uh, rated higher than expected for all three perceptions and VAS 5 was rated higher for the beautiful perception. We also expected that the VASs that were generated to be beautiful and including more curves, so the VASs that were generated to include more curves would be perceived as more beautiful than those without. And we confirmed this for VAS 7 and 10. And again, we found that VAS 12 was rated higher than expected, which uh, we didn't expect. So a possible explanation for this could be that by visually inspecting VAS 5 and 12, you can see that the curves occupy most of the visual space, even though they are less in number than the straight lines. So it could be that curves has a higher influence or uh, on the beautiful perception. And it could be also that um, the, uh, the, the equation that we used, that it was the average of the uh, aesthetic ratios, is not an average and we need to have weighting to the, to the curve ratio. Additionally, we think it could be possible that the aesthetic rules have a range where within that air range they have the expected behavior and there is a tipping point where this behavior changes, so identifying this um, uh, would make the rules more specific. Additionally, we compared the vases that were rated the highest on each of the perceptions to those that were rated the lowest and to find significant differences between them because that would indicate that the tool is able to generate those perceptions with vases. And we found that the tool is able to generate beautiful and elegant vases, but not exciting. And the reason could be that exciting perception might be influenced by another design rule that those that we have investigated, so something apart from simple and tall, could influence the uh, exciting evaluation. And it could also be that exciting is influenced by the time factor and, per and the people evaluate a vast as exciting or boring depending on the previous experience they have on other products. So here on the right you can see the most exciting vases, the most elegant vases and the most beautiful vases including number 12. That was not expected. So finally to the conclusions. As a summary, we have in research we have highlighted the importance of aesthetics in perception for products uh, because they attract uh, the attention from the consumer and they make it stand out of competitors. We have uh, uh, done a multidisciplinary research including these areas of consumer research, emotional design, aesthetics and computational design synthesis and brought them together to investigate how can we design to target product perceptions. We conducted for studies, from study 1A, the background factors, we found that there is no correlation or influence on the background for the desire to own and for beautiful. For study 1B, investigating the aesthetic factors, we identified 36 design principles that can be categorized in three uh, groups, depending on the level of detail of the design instructions they provide. The study 2 is about the development of the tool, and we can say that it was possible to implement design rules into a set grammar and a parametric model. And from study three about the evaluation of the support, uh, we found that it is uh, possible to generate beautiful and elegant vases, but not exciting. So contributions to research and academia. We have provided an improved understanding of the influence that the background can have on participants. We have shown that for desire to own and for beautiful, the effect of geometry is greater, at least for vases and for the population that we investigated that included people mainly from Europe. We have contributed by establishing a methodology to further investigate the influence that aesthetics and background of participants can have on perception. So this methodology can be used to investigate other variables and other products. We have also improved the understanding of aesthetic design rules and their uses, so the list of uh, principles. They can be used as inspiration when you're starting to generate your design, as guidelines as you are developing the shape of the product, and as evaluation tools once you have finished the generation to check if it has 
achieve the perception you wanted. And finally, we have implemented uh, the perception information into two synthesis tools, the set grammar and the parametric model for two perceptions, the beautiful and the elegant one. Contributions to industry, we have the, the highlight the importance of aesthetics is greater than the background, at least for VASIS. And is, this is relevant when entering new markets, especially if you, know, you should focus either on targeting specific consumer groups or design across them. We have also provided an improved understanding of the aesthetic design rules, so the list of principles can be used by the professional designers to make informed decisions when generating the shape of the product. And this can hopefully reduce the mismatches between the, what designers and consumers perceive from the same shape. And we have also provided them with uh, design synthesis tools that generate beautiful and elegant vases and they can be used to generate more shapes than the ones that I showed and explore the design space for new shapes. Mm. And finally, future research directions. So a more extensive study on the influence of the background on perception, including more countries. Again, as I said before, this uh, data sets that we have include people more mostly from Europe. It would also be interesting to complete the design principles tables, especially the last column that it gives you more specific instructions on how to use these principles for design. Additional studies involving products other than vases, this again will increase the number of principles and rules into the tables and even identify if some of these principles can go across product categories. Investigate the influence of functionality on perception. And this uh, we, have, we know from previous research in the literature that functionality if, um, influences the evaluation of aesthetics of a product. So if the person doesn't know how a product is, is how you use the product or what it is for, you're not going to evaluate the aesthetics positively. So understanding the influence or the combination of the two aspects is uh, important for more complex products. Further improve the aesthetic design rules for perception, again, including the tipping point concept, where you have this design rule that applies, for example, curves, influences beautiful, but too many curves could be ugly. So where is the range where this um, aesthetic rule has this expected behavior and when, when does this behavior change. And finally is um, looking into adapting the generative tools developed here for being used by, no, by consumers. Right now there is an increased easier access to 3D printing and additive manufacturing technologies. However, the consumer is not able to generate their own products. So somehow embedding these tools into existing CAD systems to support and bridge the gap for the consumer would allow for consumers to generate their own products and allow for a great customization. And with this, I come to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.